So many of you here tonight have been influenced and inspired by Mike Connaughton, including my husband Gary and me. Nearly 20 years ago, Mike helped persuade Gary to come right here to Xavier, to work at Xavier because Mike is passionate about the Jesuits and passionate about education. So we sort of joke that we're not sure if Mike gets the credit or the blame for that decision. But um, another thing that I thought of when I was thinking of Mike and Nancy is how gracious they have been over the years to open their hearts and their homes to so many people. And they bring people together and just connect them for great causes. And I will never forget the night we were sitting at their dining room table with a big group having a great time. And all of a sudden, the centerpiece caught on fire. Do you remember that? And without skipping a beat, Mike said, Nance, Dinner's burning again. <laughs> just a great sense of humor. And I also just want to say something about the Connaughton family. And I'll get a little emotional about this. But Mike has always given credit to his dear wife, Margie, who passed away 22 years ago for raising such wonderful children. And of course, tonight, we think of Makara, too. <laughs> Mike has been so blessed because he found another saintly woman to share his life and his love for so many causes. And we just want to thank you, his family, his extended family, for sharing Mike with all of us, so many people in this room, he has helped, personally helped. And we just want to thank the family for all that you've done to allow us to be part of Mike's life and yours. So I just want to thank you for that. And now I think my better half here, <laughs> I don't Mike know about Brown. that, but I did, I, I will tell you, this is blue and black, and that was for you because of, well, not necessarily Xavier, but that's okay. I'm a UC guy, but I love Xavier. But it's for the Midland Musketeers. Right? You thought I forgot about that. So many of you know Mike Connaughton in different capacities, uh, ranging from you know, business to friendships to volunteering. I know him as a good friend of mine's dad, Michael Connaughton, his son, Mike, and I were uh, great friends in grade school. And... Uh, is certainly all of his kids. Um, an active parishioner of Christ the King, uh, Mount Lookout swim team announcer, don't forget that, as well as uh, the Cincinnati Marlins announcer, Pacelli dad of a great group of kids, and notably, my sixth grade baseball and football coach. <clears throat> now let me tell you something a little bit about my athletic ability. Because we already know about his, I mean, football player and, you know, just about his rock solid. He's like Newt Rockney of Cincinnati, right? So I was the guy that was the last guy picked, and whenever I scored, the place went crazy because they felt great for Mike, right? So, you know, um, I was more or less handed. You had to take Pat and I. My, I have a twin brother named Pat. In fact, we were the beginning of the Pat and Mike jokes for Mike Connaughton, I believe. But, uh, you know, so Pat and I were on his team because we were older. We couldn't play with our own grade, so we had to play on his team. And, and um, you know, his great advice, he was a great coach, but the best advice he ever gave me batting was not my hands, moving my hands or my stance. It was, open your eyes, Brown. You can't hit a ball with your eyes closed. <laughs> I remember when I was, uh, I, I played football for him, a great coach. He and, and Mike Finn, uh, uh, Mr. Finn, were coaching. And, and at one of the practices, I had lost my wristwatch, and I w it was a watch given to me by my parents. And he had the whole team scattered out on the field looking for my watch. And somebody yells, why don't you check your wrist, Brown? And sure enough, I checked my wrist, <laughs> and it had come up a little bit further. <laughs> it was terrible. And he allowed the whole team to chase me from Lunkin Field up to Beachmont Avenue. <laughs> but that's the tough love that he demonstrates, right? Um, 
He's a great guy. I learned a lot of him, but I think I taught him patience. You know, I'd like to think I gave a little bit back to him. Uh, I, uh, I, I can't say enough about him. And, uh, uh, you know, they say that uh, any building, oh, also, he's a lector at Christ the King. And what I love about that when he reads, it's almost like hearing the voice of God. I mean, it really does sound like it. Uh, with that voice, he comes at that commanding. They say that uh, any building needs a support for pillars to stand strong, high, and last for generations. I believe Mike Connaughton is that pillar in any community or organization that he touches. His great legacy is his faith, family, and friends. And, uh, you know, God gives us all time, talent, and treasure. Anybody is lucky enough to be able to share that with one or two of those. Mike's been given and has generously shared all three of those. And... Uh, I think you'll be privileged tonight, this evening, to get to know him a little better through the voices of those he's touched. Now, with that, I would like to introduce a fellow parishioner from Christ the King, Dan Long, St. Vincent de Paul, District Council President. Dan? Thank you, Mary and Mike. You know, when most of you think of St. Vincent de Paul, I would imagine most of you think of our thrift stores, you think of our coat drives, you think of the box trucks that you see at our parishes after masses collecting goods and furniture, you think of our Thanksgiving and Christmas food giveaways, but what I need to impress upon you tonight and the core of really what we do are the home visits that our Vincentians make to our neighbors in need. No other organization does what we do we are truly unique in the service that we provide our neighbors. We truly answer the calls of the poor. Last year, we made over 8,000 visits to our neighbors in need in greater Cincinnati. We, we provided a half million dollars in rental assistance. We provided $365,000 in utility assistance. We provided $246,000 of food assistance, $120 worth of water utility assistance. That's over $1.2 million of services that we provided our neighbors in need in greater Cincinnati. And this is in addition to hundreds of beds, thousands of vouchers that we give out for, uh, for furniture and for clothing, uh, prescription medicine, that our neighbors can get for free down at our Bank Street location. We are truly in the, home prevent, the homeless prevention business. Once a neighbor goes homeless, it's hard to get them back into a home. But if we can assist them in staying in their home by providing them with an expense that we can assist with, then we're doing great things. We have over 1,000 Vincentians that are members of 57 parish-based conferences here in Greater Cincinnati. We stretch from Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish out in Anderson all the way to St. Williams in Price Hill. We go from St. Xavier downtown all the way out to uh, Corpus Christi out in Westchester. So we truly do cover Greater Cincinnati. When a struggling family makes a call to help to a parish office, the response usually comes from a Vincentian in their own neighborhood. We offer person-to-person -person assistance and are on the front line visiting neighbors in their homes. We do truly find Christ in the poor, and the, and the poor find Christ in us. To represent the goodness of God in the eyes of the poor is a blessing and a responsibility that we take on. Often the, for, the poor find it hard to believe in God, but because of our gentleness, our sympathy, and kindness, they can believe in the goodness of God. Vincentians seek to imitate and emulate St. Vincent in the five virtues essential for promoting love and respect for the poor. Simplicity, humility, gentleness, selfless, selflessness, and zeal. And tonight, we have presidents of several of our, of our conferences in attendance, and we are recognizing them for their efforts. Our presidents, 
raise funds at their parishes in order to meet their, par their neighbors' needs. They lead monthly meetings. They keep records of their meetings with neighbors. And most importantly, they maintain a very spiritual feeling among their membership. They're responsible for recruiting new Vincentians and decide how to help our neighbors. Each conference is truly like a small business running independently on its own. So those presidents that are here uh, this evening, if you could stand up and be recognized, I would greatly appreciate that. And also any other any other Vincentians, any other Vincentians that are in the in the crowd, please stand up as well and be recognized. Thank you all. Thank you all for giving of yourself and giving back to our neighbors. And by the way, if you're interested in becoming a Vincentian, see me or call our uh, Bank Street office. And finally. To you, my Connaughton, I'm speaking for the entire parish of Christ the King, of which I'm a member, and of course you're a member, that you've been such a great example to all of us of, of true love and service to our community. And it's just been a, such a great pleasure to get to know you and, uh, and to serve along with you, and just a, a great example for all of us. Now, now I would like to welcome Nikki. St. Vincent of Paul and Vincentians have been there when Nikki needed help overcoming many barriers in her life. She also found a way to give back as a volunteer. So ladies and gentlemen, here's Nikki. Wow. It's a lot of people in here. <laughs> I just thought I'd say that out loud so I can get comfortable. How y'all doing? <sighs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. When I moved to Wind Hills in 2010, I came from the first step home. Broken and had some shame and some guilt. I needed transportation for my daughter to get to school. In order for me to transfer her yellow bus service, it would have taken two weeks. If she hadn't missed school for two weeks, I would have been charged with truancy. So I had to find a way because I had no income. Someone said, go see Miss LaMonica at St. Vincent de Paul. I live in Winton Terrace. I am the proud president of the Winton Hills Community Council today. So I go to see Miss LaMonica, and all I want is bus tokens, right? But I get so, so much more. I go into her office, and I just want to make sure my child gets to school because she's an honor roll student. Today, she's in 10th grade at DePaul Crystal Ray, excelling. She's back there. <laughs> I'm very proud of my daughter. Because she walked the walk with me of recovery. When I walked into the First Step Home, I told her I would never leave her again. And the First Step Home was the only place that I could go that I could take her with me. But when I came home, I found St. Vincent de Paul. They helped me with the bus tokens for her. They also helped us to get furniture. At one point, my daughter, the oldest one, she has six children now. At that time, she had three. She suffers from mental health issues, so she had an issue. She dropped the kids off one day, and I didn't see her for about three or four months later. I had no income. I was fresh out of treatment. Only income I had was food stamps. I didn't even know how I was going to pay my rent. Again, St. Vincent de Paul came to my rescue. With groceries for my grandchildren, I had no idea where Christmas was going to come from. There were so many presents up under the Christmas tree, I just cried. They were so overwhelmed with their gifts, and they just could not believe, like, Grandma, where did all this stuff come from? I had to tell them the truth, St. Vincent de Paul. <laughs> so they helped us with the clothing. They helped us with groceries. 
And then they helped me with something else that was holding me back for 19 years. I had a traffic ticket in Wilmington, Ohio for speeding and without a seatbelt. But there was a warrant for my arrest for 21 years, right? I'm like, I don't even know where Wilmington is. I have no idea what I was doing up there in 1991. Like, I don't even believe that was me driving the car. I got the wrong person, right? So then I find out, yep, it's me. So then I had a friend. I'm also a part of the ISP, the Ignition Spirituality Project. I went on my first retreat through the First Step program, and I continue with their reflection nights on Mondays, every second Monday of the month. But a friend of mine named Miss Julie, she said, Nikki, we're going to get that warrant taken care of. Lo and behold, she drives me all the way to Wilmington to take care of the one, and I come back to find out that Kevin and Monica and Liz had decided my fate once again. They were going to pay that fine off so that I could get that police report, so that I could get a job. See, because without a police check, you can't even get a job. So I got the police check. I got my license today. God has blessed me with a 2015 Nissan Rogue. I don't even know where it came from. Like, ooh, God, this is for me. Right? But all that came because St. Vincent was there to help neighbors helping neighbors. Because I saw God in Miss LaMonica and St. Vincent de Paul. They have helped me so much. To the day I stand before you, I have a salary that pays me about $28,000, $30,000 a year. Not too bad for a little girl who came from the first step home, right? I think it's pretty good. But in my job capacity, I get to serve my neighbors. So I'm a service coordinator. So I get to continue to help neighbors. I help them with self-sufficiency. I help them find jobs. We help them with issues getting back and forth to work. When I leave here tonight, I'm going to go pick up 15 people who have a hard time getting to work, and I'm going to take them down to the Red Stadium, and they're going to get a paycheck tonight. All because of the fire that St. Vincent de Paul set in me. So you see, St. Vincent de Paul is not just a nonprofit organization. They're our family. They're our friends. And they step in when we think there's no way out. There's a lot of people in my neighborhood who can't even afford to go get diapers. They don't even know where to get them from. They don't have a clue where their formula is going to come from. But they ask me, and I say, go to St. Vincent de Paul. They'll take care of you. If you guys are willing tonight to cash out, <laughs> cash out for good, cash out for neighbors helping neighbors, cash out for kids getting to school with bus tokens because they have no other way, cash out for the grandmother who doesn't have a clue how she's going to take care of herself and her teenage child alone with four other children because her daughter has had an episode or she's going off to jail or something. We have a lot of grandparents having raising their children. And St. Vincent Paul comes to their rescue every single day. I'm proud to be a part of St. Vincent Paul. I received the President Award because one year, I didn't even know it. I was like, what? I said, you did 350 something hours of community service. And I was like, really? I did that? So I'm just standing here tonight for you to say, I am a product of what St. Vincent de Paul can do and where they can drive someone to. Today I stand before you. I've been to Washington, DC. I took Capitol Hill by storm. <laughs> and I'm going back again because I like doing that. One day I might be your council person, but right now I'm just a neighbor who's standing before you saying, help St. Vincent de Paul keep helping our neighbors in Winton Hills. Thank you. Miss Nikki, you are wonderful. And your daughter was back there waving. It's God, she said. It's God, she said. Wow. Well, now it's going to be hard to top a talk like that. But I would like to introduce the executive director of St. Vincent de Paul, a man who reminds me so much of Mike Connaughton. He has integrity, vision, and heart. Mike Dunn.
Mary, thank you very much for the introduction. Nikki, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Your story is St. Vincent de Paul. Your desire to help others who find themselves in a position similar to the position you once were in is truly inspiring. So thanks for what you're doing and keep on doing it. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening and especially thank our sponsors for supporting this event. Anytime you have the opportunity to support a great organization while celebrating a wonderful man like Mike Connaughton, it makes for a fun evening, so I'm glad to see so many of you out here uh, tonight. To Mary Massa and Mike Brown, thank you both for taking so much time out of your schedule to join us this evening. I know a lot of effort goes on behind the scenes in preparation, so if we could give Mike and Mary a round of applause, that'd be great. I would also like to thank or recognize all the St. Vincent de Paul board members in attendance tonight. And we have three different boards. So if you are a member of our advisory board, our pharmacy board, or society board, please stand now to be recognized. It is a wonderful group of people to work with, and I am very blessed to have such great leadership at St. Vincent de Paul. I want to echo Dan Long's comments regarding our Vincentians. The Vincentians are truly the arms and legs of this organization, and we could not assist as many neighbors in need as we do without all of their support. So thank you, Vincentians, for all that you do on behalf of St. Vincent de Paul throughout the year, and certainly thank you for being here this evening. And finally, I would also like to thank all the St. Vincent de Paul staff members here this evening, and especially thank Larry Shields, Patricia Hulesman, Casey White, and Sarah Speck for all their efforts in putting together tonight's event. If we could give them a round of applause as well. Thank you. When I initially spoke to Mike regarding St. Vincent de Paul's desire to honor him at this event, he did not exactly jump up and down about the opportunity. <laughs> if you know anything about Mike, you know that he does not like to be the center of attention. He is masterful at deflecting praise and turning the conversation back to you. So I let some time pass, then came back to him and ran the idea by him one more time. This time, however, I mentioned to him that by allowing us to honor him, not only for his service to St. Vincent de Paul, but to the greater Cincinnati community, he would be helping St. Vincent de Paul assist many more neighbors in need. With that, Mike's face lit up and he said he was in. It was that simple. Our tagline at St. Vincent de Paul is neighbors helping neighbors. And Mike is certainly one of those neighbors. Mike has been a long-standing member of our advisory board always willing to share his lifetime of experiences to help us better serve our neighbors in need. His advice, insights, and support have been priceless. And for me personally, having the opportunity to meet Mike at the Exemplar for breakfast every so often to discuss St. Vincent de Paul happenings at Xavier University, at Xavier University and catching up on our families has been tremendously rewarding. You see, prior to coming to St. Vincent de Paul, I spent 16 and a half years here at Xavier. And for those of you who do not know, Mike Connaughton is definitely on the Mount Rushmore of Xavier University. <laughs> so to have Mike's personal support truly means the world to me. Mike, I cannot thank you enough for everything you've done for St. Vincent de Paul and our neighbors and knees. And I really, really look forward to working with you for many more years to come. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Great job. Um, you know, one of the things that sets uh, St. Vincent de Paul apart from other organizations is the one-to-one -one support offered to struggling families. That partnership helps our neighbors know someone has their back. Support is so important in every relationship. And here to talk about Mike's impact as a mentor is Bob Crable. Bob is president of Crable Investments and works as a commercial real estate investment agent at Capital Real Estate Partners. 
Like Mike, Bob played college football, including seven years in the NFL, before founding his own sportswear company, which Midland actually purchased. He went on to teach religion at his alma mater, Moeller High School, and was the head football coach there for eight seasons. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm round of applause to our next speaker, Mr. Bob Crable. Bob. Well, Mike, I was wondering what I was going to say tonight um, regarding how your influence on me has uh, had ties together with St. Vincent de Paul and, and all that. Nikki, I think you, uh, you helped me with your talk. Thank you very much. Um, St. Vincent de Paul is about people helping people, whether you know those people or whether you don't know those people. I'd like to tell a couple stories about Mike, how he has influenced me. Um, Mike and I first met, and I don't know if you remember this or not, Mike, 1976, um, I was a, a snot-nosed little 16-year-old that, um, that, that, that was part of the Midland baseball program, and I happened to be someone who worked at Midland as well. And uh, between the office, the warehouse, always nice to be at the office, it was air-conditioned. Um, but um, George Graff brought me into your office one day, and, uh, and he said, uh, you know, Mr. Connaughton, this is Bob, Bobby Crable, as, uh, as you affectionately refer to me. Um, and he said to me, you know, hey, um, Mr. Connaughton here uh, had some time with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I looked. And I'm, at that time, I was used to bigger offensive linemen. And I, I looked at, at Mr. Connaughton, and in my mind, I thought, golly, he's not very big, which means he must be mean. <laughs> so I kept my eye on Mr. Connaughton and he, when, when he was in. Now, he traveled a lot at that time. And, uh, and I didn't get to see him a whole lot, as I recall. Um, but the one thing I can tell you about him that impressed me more than you'll ever know, every time you saw me, you said, hey, Bobby. And, and, and I guess I look at that and I say, um, you don't know when you're going to make an impact on people. And you've made an impact on people so many times, I assure you. Um, one, one last story, because this is, once Midland had purchased Crable Sportswear, um, we, had, uh, we had a bad year, and I had to make a presentation to the board. And it just so happens as I get up and I'm making my presentation, and, um, and one of the board members happens to be dozing a little bit. I'm thinking to myself, you know, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I better pick it up. I better get some, you know, I better step, find a song and dance something. And as I looked at this board member who was dozing, and it just so happens I saw Mike looking at him at the same time, and as I look at him, he looks at me, and he kind of gives me a nod where, you know, he says, hey, that's okay, kid. You know, and, uh, and I finished the presentation. And, uh, and I never let you know how much I appreciated your support. It, uh, it made an incredible impact on my life, not just at that point, but my life. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank St. Vincent de Paul for honoring him. He has been, uh, and I'm one person, guys. Um, he's done this so many times that uh, I'm very proud to, to, to be associated with, with Mike Connaughton. And, um, you know, may God bless you and your family all. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Well, now I would like to introduce another person of heroic dedication, John Pepper. John spent four decades with Procter and Gamble and many of those years, as you'll recall, at the highest level, and then went on to be the chairman of the Walt Disney Company. 
John has been deeply committed to Cincinnati and has served numerous community organizations. And in fact, he served as a trustee at Xavier University along with Mike. So ladies and gentlemen, John Pepper. Thank you, Mary. I was thrilled to be offered the opportunity to be part of this celebration for my my good friend Mike. I first met Mike in January of 1985. I was just joining the Xavier board. Our paths have not crossed on a weekly or daily basis since then, but it's fair to say that my memory of that time and my regard and respect for Mike could not be higher. There are some people that you meet, and we all know this, and when you meet them, you almost naturally break out into a big smile. And that's always been the case with you, Mike, and with you too, Nancy. When I joined the Xavier Board, I thought I was going to get into something that was kind of easy, nice, prayerful, <laughs> bucolic even. It didn't turn out that way. <laughs> Mike was the chairman, and how fortunate it was for me, and how fortunate it was for Xavier. We had a couple of pretty challenging years as Mike oversaw two presidents before we had the enormous blessing of Father Hoff coming to this great university. I don't think I've known any board member in either profit or nonprofit world who's given more of himself or herself to a board than you gave, you Mike gave to Xavier University. Xavier would have made it without you, of course, but it wouldn't have made it the way it did. Uh, this, these were crisis moments, and you stepped forward so selflessly in doing what you did. People sometimes ask me, what are the characteristics of the people I most admire? And I list three, competence, character, and caring. And I can't think of three, three words competence, character, and caring that better sum up you, Mike, for me. We had a lot of fun together with all those challenges. We laughed together. Bill Keating and I, you reminded me, never ceased to kid you about when you would invoke the privilege of your position to reinstate football. <laughs> or have a surprising appropriation past the desk for building a new football stadium. We never let go of that. And I never will. <laughs> what you may not remember is a gift you gave to me personally to my family. It came, I guess, 86 or 87. I must have been looking a bit tired. And you said, John, do you ever go on vacation? And I said, yeah, I do. And in so many words, I think you conveyed to me, you look like you need to go on one now. <laughs> and I said, do you have any ideas for me? And you say, I do. There's this associate of mine that's got a place in Vero Beach, Florida. I never heard of Vero Beach before, but I went down and went to the place of your associate, and Francie and I had a great weekend. That was 1987. And two years later, we bought a place in Vero Beach, which we never would have known if it weren't for you, and we still have it, and had 10 of our grandchildren there last week at Easter. And we never would have found it if you hadn't cared enough about me to raise the question where you get enough vacation and give me an idea and then go to a friend of yours and get me a free place <laughs> in a pretty expensive location with John's Island. Any event, um, you are a very unique human being. I drove onto this campus tonight as I have before and I look at all these buildings, I'm now starting to get lost, it's like you see. And I thought, you know, all those buildings that are there are a tribute to so many people, to priests, to donors, and everyone else. But they're a tribute to you. And there will be administrators, and there will be faculty members, and there will be students who decades from now won't know you, other than perhaps a name on some building or an office. But they'll owe you something for having cared enough about a place to give of yourself in the most selfless way that I've ever known and to have been given a chance to say a few words up here tonight about you is a treat. 
to share those also with your lovely bride here. So thank you, Vincent Paul, for having called me and said, would you like to come? And I said, if I'm in town, you're not gonna keep me off a podium. I want to be here to say a few words about this dear friend. God bless you, Mike, your whole family. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. I think I'm looking a little tired, Mike. Maybe you can. <laughs> now we want to bring in the football team from 1960. No. <laughs> That was really wonderful, John. Uh, thank you so much. Um, there are a few people uh, that can't be here, but would like to tell you a few things on a video that has been prepared for you, Mike. You know, anybody who knows Mike Connaughton knows three things to be true about Mike. It's not possible to describe Mike Connaughton in one word. First, he's a Marine. Semper Fi, that's two words. Dignity. Second, Mike's Irish. Be prepared to be charmed. And third, Mike's a Jesuit, which means he's a man for others. I kind of kid about it, but you can't say no to him. You want to uh, help him any way you can. Be prepared to be um, to have the conversation turn to you instead of to him. That's the way he is. So dignity or, or grace or integrity. It's going to say faithful. Words like integrity and honesty and, and it just the list goes on. Dignagracity. Dignagracity. That's the word I would use. At different times in my life, I would describe him in different ways. I could talk with Mike about anything. We could talk about the business. We could talk about whatever challenged us personally. Right now, he is an extraordinary mentor. Mike's an unusual combination of uh, coach, uh, teammate, and supporter. He's the kind of guy, it kind of it feels like a coach in a way that you want to go through the wall for. Mike has always been uh, what, almost a second father in some ways, you know? Um, he, that'll shock him, he's never heard me say that. Mike has made me a better person, a better father. And football brought him here to Xavier University, which is his second home. He played football for Xavier, you know. He's got the knees to prove it, or had the knees to prove it, I should say. Mike is the symbol of Xavier University. Without a doubt, Xavier University would not be what it is today without his influence. He's the person who bleeds the bluest blue of any person who bleeds a Xavier blue. It's that simple. And at Xavier, Mike's been involved for 45 years on the board. 45 years! There's a great photograph that comes from Jim Hoff's inauguration as president. It's as if they've known each other all their lives. They were like brothers, they really were. And it's important to note that Mike did not give the gift to name the boardroom in his honor. That came from someone else. Learning Commons is the same kind of thing, and yet again, another donor wanted Mike's name on it. My dad has three very extraordinary things that is very important to him. His first is his family and he would do anything for us. And our family is so close, you know, immediate family, extended family. Dad has an extreme work ethic. He believes in working as hard as he can to give back to others also. And then his faith, he truly believes that God has given him extraordinary gifts and it's his responsibility to, to give back. It's Matthew 25 come to life about feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and so on. That's St. Vincent de Paul. St. Vincent de Paul was doing all of this incredible work in the community, but really was not well known. The mission of St. Vincent de Paul captures for Mike exactly what we're called to do. So I was sort of looking around for who could help and somebody said Mike Connaughton. 
I mean, it seems like Mike has always been on the St. Vincent de Paul Advisory Board. With Dad's modest upbringing and his faith, he believes he was given gifts, and he worked hard and nourished those gifts, and now he wants to give back. When you're very aware of gratitude, and that's one of your motivating factors, then it just kind of opens your heart to the community naturally. He's just been doing all sorts of things across his entire career to help make Cincinnati a better place. He's the first one to step up and volunteer to help, not just with generosity, but his expertise and his web of influence, his network. It's amazing to me the gravitas that this man has in this community. The thing is, he does it all so quietly. It is a responsibility of ours to go out and help others and be involved with others, and, and Mike exemplifies that better than anybody that I know. We're talking about a giant of a man. He's going to keep on going and helping other people, you know, until he's physically <laughs> incapable of doing that. You can have your name on a building. You can be recognized in the most elite rooms in this entire community, but the room that really matters is some little home in a poor neighborhood where somebody's sleeping on the floor and they don't know if they're going to have enough food. That's what matters the most, and that's where my spirit is. And now, without any further wait, the man of the hour, Mr. Mike Connaughton. Thank you very, very much. Could I give you that, please? Thanks. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> what kind, kind words. And I truly don't recognize myself in those words. <laughs> so very, very special. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mike. Bobby Crable. Great, great friend. John Pepper. My mentor, really. I appreciate all the time we did spend together on this board. You're a champ. My wife, Nance, gave me some advice before I came up. She said, whatever you do, don't be corporate. <laughs> <laughs> so I certainly will try not to be corporate. That gives me an entree to introduce my family, I hope. My wife, dear wife, Nancy. My daughter, Kathy, and her husband, Doug Matthews. My son, Mike, and his wife, Margaret. They have three wonderful children, my grandchildren. Michael, a Georgetown grad from last year. Son, Patrick, who is a junior at Stanford University. I am very proud of the fact that he is the only junior to be captain of the Stanford swim team. And he's a good one. and their daughter Kathleen, who was a freshman this year at Georgetown University. <laughs> then my daughter Peggy, who you did an excellent job in the... <laughs> and her husband Ted Berger. <laughs> their, their three children are with us this evening. Daughter Caroline, who is a junior here at, will be a senior, here at Xavier University. Their daughter, Makara, who just graduated, or will graduate this next week from Ursuline Academy, 
she's been accepted for the UC DAP program. And their son, Brett, who is a junior at Xavier High School, St. Xavier High School, and a member of their city championship football team, and their soon-to-be state champion, I said city champion, I meant state champion football team, and soon-to-be champion, state champion of their lacrosse team. My daughter Betsy and her husband Dan Shannon and they have two daughters one Maggie who is a freshman at Lafayette College and they're on a volleyball scholarship and their other daughter Molly she is the youngest of grandchildren and she is a sophomore at Ursuline Academy You can tell by that that the Connaughton family are well-educated at this point. <laughs> you know, I'm more than a little uncomfortable standing up here tonight. It's because this is such a confusing moment to me. You see, on the one hand, this evening is a great honor for my family and me, and we are very, very grateful. But on the other hand, there is my abiding belief that we should be applauding the work of the real champions tonight. Like the team, the St. Vincent de Paul and Cincinnati Eye Institute, who are about to open their fourth clinic to serve patients who would otherwise be unable to get an eye, any eye care. Or that wonderful group from the St. Vincent de Paul charitable pharmacy program that cares for good people who need medicine, often just to stay alive. Or the neighbor mentors and coaches from the St. Vincent de Paul Getting Ahead program who join force to find the answers and strength within themselves to try to break the cycle of poverty. Nikki, you did it so eloquently to explain really what that is all about. Or the long line of St. Vincent de Paul volunteers who served 2,200 meals to neighbors in need this past Thanksgiving and Christmas, and who handed out more than 800 coats this winter. So you see what I mean. And that was just a snapshot of the work of St. Vincent de Paul of Cincinnati. Together, these compassionate people provided emergency assistance and basic necessities to more than 120,000 people in need last year, one neighbor at a time, just as they did the year before and the year before that. So if you don't mind, I would like to accept this award, not for myself, but on behalf of the generous and caring people who make up St. Vincent de Paul, Cincinnati. You bring hope to the poor, lonely and forgotten in our city. You make faith come alive through your service to others. I feel blessed to be part of your team. I thank you so much for this evening and may God forever hold us all in the palm of his hand. Thank you.